a species will change because of genetic factors and environmental factors. I just found a chair. So I'm gonna sit here and tell you about natural selection. So, what is natural selection? Natural selection is the strongest survive, right? If it, you're better adapted to your environment as an organism in the woods or in a snowy region, you're going to survive. In this lab, you're gonna be dealing with two different alleles. You're gonna be dealing with a dominant allele for white fur in the mouse, and you're going to be dealing with a lowercase w, which is brown fur in the mice. The environment is a huge factor in this lab. If you see a S, that means the mouse survives. It doesn't matter if it's white or if it's brown, it's going to live. If you see a D, again, it doesn't matter if it's brown or if it's white, it gets a disease, it dies. If you see a P, it does not matter if it's brown or if it's white, the predator will eat it. But if you see a C, this means that they blend into their environment and the predators cannot see them and they will survive. There's gonna be two different piles. There's gonna be mice that live and mice that die. So on the right-hand side, consider it the graveyard. You won't always be able to see these signs, but I wanted to let you know which side they will be on. The first part of the lab, what we're going to investigate is if there are mice that lived in a forest region, which ones are going to survive better? Would it be a white mouse or would it be a brown mouse? I'm going to pull two alleles at random and I get a heterozygous white offspring. I pull a C, which means I have to ask myself, will this camouflage? Well, white will not camouflage in a forest region, so it will die. So I put it off into the dead graveyard pile. I'm gonna pull another two alleles and I get another white. I pull a P, that means a predator eats it. Doesn't matter what color it is, so it goes into the graveyard. You can see at the bottom how my counter is going to change. I've gotten two whites so far. This is my third and it should change here in a moment. And we, all of our white uh, mice have died as we've been pulling these. And that just is, is at random. This is not, I'm not pulling them in any sort of order. I've shuffled them and I'm gonna to continue to pull these and you'll see how this counter changes throughout the assignment. So now we're going to slow down because this is our last couple here and we're going to see our numbers, how they have finalized. We have 13 white, but 11 of the 13 have died because they're in the forest region and they are not blending in. Whereas our brown ones, they are blending in and they are surviving. So we're going to take the alleles from the surviving ones and we're going to pass them on to generation two. Generation two. So what generation two means is all those alleles that were living and they were not eaten or were not killed off by disease, they are passing their genetic information on. So you're gonna see how our brown counter is going to increase to two and then our white is a three. All of our white ones have died off so far and our brown ones have all lived. So start to think, why is that happening? Why are all of our brown ones living and our white ones are dying? And what does that have to do with natural selection? Last generation, generation three, go. So in this last generation of mice, I want you to pay close attention to the counter. Our first couple are gonna be brown and we're gonna to continue to see brown show up and hardly any white. And that's because those mice are blending into their environment. The white ones stick out like a sore thumb and the different predators will come and eat them. So even though that brown is recessive, it shows up more now because it is helping them survive. In this second lab, we're gonna figure out if a white mouse or a brown mouse is going to survive better in this cold climate. I gotta get back inside. 
This is going to be the same principle as our forest region. We're going to pull two alleles. So we have one from mom and one from dad. And I have a capital lowercase. This means the mouse is again white. So again, same exact principle, same alleles. Just we're just in a new environment now. So you have to ask yourself, was this going to survive or die? Well, it's an S. So S means it survives. It doesn't matter what the color is. So we're going to take these two and we're going to put them into our survive pile. And we're going to continue to do this. And I'm going to zoom in here so you can kind of see the different um, environmental factors and the different alleles that are showing up until we have this one here. We have our first brown mouse here and it does not camouflage. So it says it does not camouflage. It will go into the dead pile because it does not have that dominant allele. So we're going to scoop that up and put it into our dead, our first one into our dead pile. And we're going to keep moving on. And we're going to notice how there are more and more white ones around and notice how the brown ones are now dying off. Then we did have one survive that was brown. As I finish up the last couple cards here, the last one will survive. We have many, many white ones surviving and not as many brown. We only had one brown one survive. So just because it's recessive does not mean it's going to die. Generation two, let's go. So like in the forest region, all the ones that survived will live on and they will continue to live and they will reproduce and pass on their genetic information. I'm going to shuffle these up just so we're not getting the same order and we're going to need to see how this information is going to come out again. But I'm going to fast forward so that we can see these numbers go past a little bit quicker. So far, every single one of our brown mice have died off and only one of our white ones have survived. Now, you, as you can see here, there are recessive alleles showing up, but with that dominant allele overpowering, it's not even going to give the recessive allele a chance. So here we have 14 total white ones surviving and no brown ones surviving whatsoever. So we're going to have a lot of white mice in this region because they're able to blend into their environment and some of them might die off due to disease or just not being lucky with some predators. Generation three. In this first case, I'm going to pull two alleles. We're going to have a capital and a lowercase. We have our first white one, but it gets killed off by a predator. So this is a great example of white mice can still die in this environment. It just doesn't happen as often as the brown ones. So we're just comparing the two. It's, we're not saying no white mice ever die. It just doesn't happen as often as the brown one because predators will easily see the brown ones before they will ever see the white ones. And they're not going to be searching for the white ones if they can easily get a quick, easy stack of a brown mouse. Are all of the alleles that are left over, we do have dominant and recessive. So brown mice are possible in this region. It just not, isn't as likely with a dominant allele showing up more. 